I'm coming from the University of the Basque Country in Spain, and I'm going to present how we introduce the annotations in our university for our certain purposes. It is a co-work with my supervisor, Oscar Diaz, and Jeremias Perez, who have developed one of the tools that I'm going to show you. First of all, as I mentioned before, I'm a PhD student in computer science from the University of the Basque Country, and my research group is called Tonekin. My research topic is offering a solution to apply web annotations in different domains. And when we started to introduce annotations, we noticed that academics are quite reluctant to, to move from physical annotations to the web-based ones. This work reports which ones are our, which one was our strategy on introducing annotations in, in academics. Our follower strategy was not based on the ubiquity advantages that uh, came the web, but we emphasize more in the data portability that we can use when moving things to the web. Annotations are not an end. They have a purpose or aim or a goal. Some of the purposes that I'm going to talk to you about are gathering information, transparent inquiry, semantic annotation, strategy reading, conducting systematic literature reviews, and marking exams. The first three are examples taken from the community of the annotation community worldwide, and the later ones are our main purposes in our, in our daily work. So the first one is gathering information. Uh, last year, the people from digital polarization presented us that they gather information during their investigations using annotations. They provide a working methodology just to, for the students when investigating news to identify which ones are fake news. For that, they annotate pieces of news on, or test fragments or quotes in different blogs or newspapers or whatever, and they are able to gather all these annotations in a list inside a wiki for further analysis. Uh, they have developed a, a Chrome extension called DigiPo, that it's a, an extension which works as a hypothesis client for gathering information for fact checking. It presents different actions for, uh, for the specific domain, like tag this page or save publication date. And those actions create different annotations that are consumed in a wiki page for the further analysis. Another example is uh, coming from the people of Qualitative Data Repository which is supported by the University of Syracuse in a partnership with Hypothesis, and they use the annotations to enhance published qualitative data, data research. In this example, we can see how the people from Qualitative Data Repository enhance their qualitative research to help readers to understand the analysis done by the authors. The idea is just to provide a list of different kind of annotations related with the qualitative data research, like analytic notes, source excerpts, references, etc., to enhance that research report. For that, what they use is the default hypothesis client, which is capable to create annotations which are general annotations, and then they visualize it in a, in a sidebar, enhancing the qualitative research. The third example is another purpose that is related with the semantic annotation. People from Pandit have developed a tool which can be used to give semantic to certain text fragments or pages from the web. What they have done is just an annotator where the highlighted text can work as a subject or an object for a certain triple. This triple relates the annotated, with a, the annotated text with a concept in the ontology. In this example, we can see, for example, that they relate the, the website, in the website of the I annotate, the San Francisco word with the San Francisco uh, 
concept in the in the DBpedia. And in this case, the storing and visualization is quite similar to the previous one, but the data recorded is a triple, and those are quite different because they use the, the triples just to be filtered or consumed using a query language like Sparkle, for example. So in our main purposes, we also try to use annotations. Formally, we started uh, using Hypothesis, the default client, that it's a general purpose annotator to conduct a strategy drilling, to conduct also systematic literature reviews, and uh, we try to, to mark a student's exams. But we found some problems to engage the practitioners to use them for those specific purposes, using a, a, a general purpose annotator. So the question here is, does, the, does the, the purpose impact on how annotations are produced or are consumed? And if it is important, how we can capture that purpose and how we can move from general purpose annotation to domain specific ones. Our solution it was just using color coding. The idea is just to mark text fragments, web pages or whatever using colors as a mean of identifying the purpose. We can classify the different annotation purposes depending on how they are created and how they are consumed. For example, the people from Transparent Inquiry use general, general purpose annotations and they, are, they, they consume them as a list in a sidebar. While in the semantic annotation, they need to provide an ontology-based annotation, and it is possible to query for those annotations using different properties. So now we will see how we capture purposes for our, uh, our main purposes, which are strategic reading, systematic literature reviews, and exam marking. The first one is the strategy reading that we develop on a specific tool called DScaffolding. The idea of uh, the strategy reading is basically the process of constructing meaning by interacting with the text. It is known that, effect that effective readers usually have a purpose while reading something. Uh, we usually use mind maps for problem solving in our researchers. They are quite flexible and help us during thinking process because we can move the nodes from one place to another one and relate them and group them in an easy way. In our case, a problem always have some, has some causes and some consequences. The researcher needs to focus funding those, the evidences to, for, for those causes and those consequences. The question here is that the evidences are not in the mind map. They are in the literature and we need to capture it. For that, we have created a hypothesis client which provides a color coding to denote which ones are the causes and the consequences while reading. The researcher starts to read and after reading, uh, when he found an evidence of a cause or a consequence, he only needs to capture it just using the annotation process. This annotation automatically will be inserted as a node in the mind map, reducing the copy-paste manual process, maintaining the, the focus while reading because he don't need to move from one realm to the other, and, they, and, and it increases also the traceability because now we are able to refer to the annotation in the reading realm. So this scaffolding automatically populates the mind map for further analysis of the problem. As we can see in this case, the production of, of the annotations are based on a purpose of what we call codes. And it provides a custom visualization of the annotations in the mind map. When dimensioning these purpose-aware annotations for strategic reading, 
each code is a strategic reading element that it can be a cause or a consequence, and it provides a customized visualization for strategic reading in design science research. The next example is, is how we conduct systematic literature reviews, and for that we have done uh, another tool called Highlight and Go. The systematic reviews aim is just the identification and classification of, of relevant publications on a topic or area. By default, it is a collaborative task or activity. And its main results are a synthesis of the literature, the classification that we gather from the different dimensions from the, from the research, and the gaps found in the research area. Systematic reviews usually follow the one process that it's, it's systematic by, by default, and we can see it in the right side. It's defined by Barbara Kitzenheim in 2015, and it's widely used in the area. Highlight and Go is focused on data extraction, that it's a small activity in, in this process, and this activity consists on extracting relevant information to answer our research questions. Usually, to answer those questions, we follow a classification schema, which, is, which will help us to gather the evidences to answer uh, those questions. This schema is composed by facets and codes where each paper or primary study must be classified for each code. So what we have done is just to provide a highlighter using the same idea of the color coding, but in this case, the difference is that the codes are grouped in different facets. The point here is that we want to provide a classification where each paper must be classified for each of the facets. So it gives us a, a tabular visualization of the systematic review. As we can see here, um, it's, it, we use a, a Google sheet, and traditionally in systematic reviews, they also use spreadsheets to record the classification, where each row corresponds to a primary study, and each column corresponds to a facet. The difference here in our approach is that the spreadsheet is the reflect of the annotations that we have done. So thanks to that translation of the annotations to the web, we were able to automatize the, the recording process. Another benefit is that we also give to each decision a traceability, allowing any other reviewer uh, which is participating in, in the systematic review to check and verify that the classification was correctly done. And we can look at the different annotation, annotated rationals. So here we can see how, how, is the, how we can how work the, the data flow, that it's more or less the same as in the scaffolding, but the visualization required in this domain is completely different. So when dimensioning this annotation purpose, we can see, we can say that we create theme-based annotations, which are codes groups, and we consume those annotations in a table-based visualization. And the last example that I'm going to show you is how we solve exam marking for teachers uh, when using web, using web annotations. Exams usually, usually are done to measure a student's knowledge or a skill in a, in a certain subject or topic. Teachers need to evaluate uh, the different students' work, and for that, they usually follow these four activities or, 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 or process. That is, read the exam, annotate which ones are the mistakes that the uh, student have done, mark the exam using the evaluation rubric that I want to show you now, and then we provide feedback to, to the students. What we have done is basically translate these activities to digital exams using annotations. Here we can see uh, an example of a, 
of a evaluation rubric. Imagine that this evaluation rubric is just to correct an XML exam, where each row can be an activity or a skill that we, that we want to evaluate, and the columns represent which ones are the possible marks in a range from 0 to 15. What we have done is just translate these evaluation rubrics to a color coding based activity. As we can see here in the right side part, the, in the right side part, uh, the teacher annotates with the purpose of marking the student's exam. Which ones have the advantages here? The first one is that the evidences are marking the digital exam and the students are able to see them at home. Our experience is that the students who pass the exam usually don't go for the review and they are losing an opportunity to learn from their mistakes. So we give us uh, an opportunity just to revise the, their exam at home. The second one is that the Google Sheet is automatically filled using annotations. Traditionally, teachers use uh, different spreadsheets to save students' marks, and it is automatically filled based on the annotations that we have done. Uh, other, other kind of, of visualizations can be done. For example, we use a Sankey chart done in, in D3GS, which one of the main advantages or, is that we can look at the trending that, that happens in the exam. For example, which ones are the more dis most difficult e exercises, which ones have the relations between them, and where the teacher may need to focus on in, in, in their explanations in class or when, where he need to emphasize. So apart from that, we also have a fine-grained visualization for each student. In this case, we compare uh, the different exercises in, in, a, in a specific exam or practice, and we compare it with the results of the mean of the class. So uh, uh, as these ones are the dimensions for marking the exams, this domain required, requires a theme-based annotation, and what it is consumed is how we consume those annotations is using domain-specific visualizations, like a spreadsheets or, or custom charts. So to finish, I have some brief conclusions. The goal here is just to promote annotations through domain-specific clients. For that, we follow the color coding strategy, and we apply it for three different purposes. And we have done a small visualization for the three of them. And have to mention that all the Hypothesis clients are fully available in the Chrome Store. The last one that it's uh, the exams marking is just in, in beta, but, but you can use it. And if you are interested on it, we can show you a, a small demonstration during the, the conference. And also we are looking for partners uh, at I annotate, and it would be great just to, to find some, some collaborations here in, for, our, for your projects or your use cases. So thank you for, for your patience, and now I'm open to your questions. Harit, just a small thing. Um, yeah. The link to the slides on the, the, sh the I annotate schedule is broken. Could you just put the updated link on there? Sorry, I can't hear you. The link to the slides on the I annotate 2018 schedule is broken. Um, if you could just put the link that you have in the last slide of this presentation there, that would be great. At the beginning or? The, the, on the last slide. Oh, the, la the last one. Uh, this one. Oh, God. This one. Ah, uh, okay, right, that's great, I've got it. Thank you, I'll do it. We'll make sure the link in the program is correct. 
Other questions for Haritz? Hi. Uh, Hi. Really impressive stuff. I love that you're building different ways of interacting with the hypothesis annotation model with different clients. Um, but um, I have a question more about do you align in some way or is this a plan to adopt the W3C web annotation data model? Or are you right now building everything that is you know, more coupled with the hypothesis servers or that model? Nowadays, we rely on the hypothesis servers. Um, we, we use its API. And we were thinking at the beginning just to follow the, the standard W3 solution. But we found that we need to, to create an infrastructure there. And, and just we are trying to, to do some prototypes just to validate our, our ideas or our feelings or our, uh, yeah, or our ideas. And just, just because of that, we, we use only hypothesis. But the code is available. So if someone is interested in porting the application to another, another service or whatever, uh, it's feel, it's feel yeah, definitely. To, to the That's great. Thank you. So uh, as a quick question, um, are you thinking on, on uh, looking for use cases um, in any uh, possible environment, or are you keeping like in the education scholarly type? The idea that we have is we have uh, here we show you uh, three examples, but the idea in my thesis is just to uh, provide a solution that must help in, in, in many areas, not only in education. So that's why I'm here. I, I want to know which ones are your, or your use cases and your daily problems, and if it is possible just to, to use our solution for, for those use cases, it would be great. I have a question specifically about the, the part of the presentation where you talked about using annotation to mark students' exams. Mm -hmm. It seemed to me like you were describing the process by which instructors would use annotation to assess student work. And I'm curious about whether you have begun to explore how you might um, assess annotations that students made. Is that something that you'd want to, like, do you have a plan for tracking and recording which annotations learners make and having that be something that instructors could assess or grade or evaluate? I don't know really if I understood well which one is your question. Okay. So maybe let, you let can me put me an example or maybe it's so clear for me. For example, let's say we had all of our students read the same article. Yeah. And they were supposed to annotate in a specific way, or they were supposed to respond through annotations, no. and that would compose the activity that we would then be assessing. No. If you're gathering the information in the forms of those triples about what everyone's doing, mm -hmm. that could be something that you could assess or grade or mark as a, as no. a quiz. Or a, a, we were a, thinking also in the idea of using those annotations for conducting the exercises that the students are, need to do. For example, uh, we have done another tool that I didn't present here because it's quite obsolete and I don't know if it, is works or not, if it works nowadays. But the idea is just to provide which ones are the, the things that a, a student need to find in a, in a poem, for example and just to allow them to mark which ones are the, those things. And then the teacher can verify which ones are the, the results, and they can also collaborate uh, each other. So, um, One last question. Um, I love the fact that you um, took the annotations out of sort of the purely 
text world. It's not just a list of you know, highlights and block coded text, but mm -hmm. he used the, the, the types um, in order to sort of reframe that and give it another display. Most of the examples you gave were sort of spreadsheet type cell displays. Um, as a you know, PhD researcher, I'm sure you like, came up with a zillion other ideas that you didn't get a chance to implement. Are there any um, that, you know, non-textual things that you want to look at next? In our use cases, I don't think so. Maybe it could be interesting just to annotate uh, figures or tables in, in, in different uh, research articles or papers, but I think that the, what we must, what we work mainly is, is just text. So, so I don't know. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, I mis misunderstood. I don't know, really. I don't know. Haritz, great yeah. presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I've been... <laughs> As a, as a software web developer, I am mm -hmm. looking at accessibility a lot, web accessibility, and certainly using colors is not going to work for blind no. people. Now, not to criticize, but I'm just wondering if you've thought of accessibility for your product. Yeah, we, it's one of the problems that the colors have, but it's quite difficult just to to fill all the possibilities. I think that our idea is based in color coding because the colors usually help you in, in remembering the concepts. And we don't, we don't know uh, another way just to, to help, the, in this case, the, the different students just to, to help them remember, remembering the concepts. All right, another round of applause for Haritz. Thank you all.